Hi guys, uh, we're live at Prochak Bengaluru and today we have with us Sabda, who is the co-founder of Stepping Out. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard about it, like the killing it and uh, also he's also been doing a lot of events right from 2010, it's called Rise to the Equity. And if you have visited Hangover in Indranagar, that's his guess. Yeah. So a couple of questions that we're going to be uh, asking him today. Firstly, uh, Sapta, we just want to know a little bit more about yourself. What so, you? I I mean, I studied in Bangalore, I studied in St. Joseph Boys High School. So, I'm a civil engineer from Ramaya, MS Ramaya. But I started our company when we were in 11th standard. No, when we were in 12th standard, I would say. So, we had started events, we had gone for a freshers party and after that we wanted to do our own events. So, that's how we started it off by throwing our own college freshers party and it was from in the afternoon, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. because we couldn't do it at night. And that's how we started our whole uh, thing in our early days. And I knew post-engineering that this is what I wanted to do. Because when at the end of engineering, our company had already become in one particular level, I would say, and it had already reached one particular stage. And my partner Don is also a medical engineering mm -hmm. student from Ramay as well. And then we decided saying that this is what we like doing and when you try and convert what you, what, when you like what you do, then you always have the room to go because you are doing the full art. And we realized saying that you know, this is what we wanted to do whole art. We wanted to do our events and that's when we scaled up across the country post India. So we scaled up across the country in the last 3-4 years. So, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are really huge right now, but how were your initial days? Can you tell us? So, yeah. the first, when we did our first event, I knew we were in college, we wanted to target college students. Mm -hmm. So we would actually print out posters and go to each and every college and stick it outside in the in a tree. Right. We take stones and nails, we would buy it and we actually would go stick it out the same street. And like how these salesmen do it, we printed small flyers about it and we used to distribute it to everybody. Okay. Saying, please come for my event, please come for my event, please come for my event. There's free PlayStation and okay. there's free music and please come another. So that's how we actually got our first few people. Because this was in 2010. I would say, uh, yeah, about 8 years ago, yeah, 2010, 2011, okay. around that time. That's how we got our first 250, 300 people, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. And um, how did it go from there? 250 members? So, you? how did we, so retargeting is the key for any business. Right. For marketing as a whole, retargeting is extremely important. Yeah. So, we had 250, 300 people and we started retargeting into them mm -hmm. for events or events. So, every event, say, if I grew in 100 more people, mm -hmm. With, our, with the database mm -hmm. and we start retargeting. So right now we have a couple of lakhs and a couple of thousands and all of that and we retarget them. So retargeting is what helped us grow our business. Good. So the same like when you come for my event this week, yeah. I would say next week I have something else. Right. Why don't you try that out? Right. The third week I have something very different. Why don't you try it out? So I try to do work, like be versatile in our concepts, yeah. differentiate the concepts mm -hmm. so that it's not monotonous, it's something different each and every time and I invited you to come for everything. So how do you reach out to them? Is it one to one? Do you send our SMS? Yeah, we have reached out on SMSs, on WhatsApps, and emailers, and our social media is a big thing. Yeah, and we try and so how we always try to do is we try to create a brand around ourselves, mm -hmm. saying that you know this is what we do, this is what we do, so people start following us on SMSs or on Instagram or on Facebook and everything, and then we retarget to the people saying that you know. Don is doing something, Sapta is doing something, Sharad is doing something. Got it, got it. So that is how it helps. So that is how retargeting and creating a brand helps. Yeah. I think you're probably using a lot of social media terms. You were probably doing social and media before social media became a yeah. thing. And I think, I think what you bring into it is personal. Like you mentioned retargeting way back in 2010. That's a thing in Facebook too. Now retargeting is not social media. Exactly. Like, exactly. On, like on Instagram, yeah. people are following us, we put regular stories. We try to put posts, we try to DM people, message people, say come over. Mm -hmm. So retargeting now in the form of our like app, like yeah. technology. So uh, another thing now, uh, you did that 8 years back you mentioned. And would you do anything, for example, if someone else is starting out in the party scene today, they are doing their own events, would you suggest anything to them? They are starting out from scratch today. I would suggest, so who is starting with events yeah. is sustainability. Okay. Like there are, there are probably a lot of people who have done an event once. Uh -huh. 50% of that event twice, 50% uh -huh. of that event twice, and 10% of that who lasted. Uh, so, so sustain, yeah. sustainability is, see, it's, you might sometimes make quick money yeah. and then not do it, yeah. and then you lose the flow. Yeah. And you might lose quick money mm -hmm. and then you might not do it again, lose the flow. But I would say winning and losing money is a part and part of the game. Yeah. And sustainability, like any other business, is the most important thing. So, when you mention that you lose money somewhere, say, say you do your first event, you lose money. 
how do you make up your mind to go again on the what are the measures right, again? Like a sustainability. Like we uh-huh. know that we want to do this, let's give it another shot. Sure. Let's give it another in that other phase, let's give it another shot. Okay. Stepping out was the was the was the was the was the result of that. So the first product failed. Mm-hmm. And then we said Sega, let's give it another shot mm-hmm. and we turned it around. Awesome. So where do you say stop? For you, it worked out. Do you, do you think it, it, that is the mantra for everyone? Like try, try till you fail. I would definitely say try, try. I mean, snap deal changed twelve yeah. times or fifty times or how many times they and changed. And they're still, yeah, they're still, they're still doing something or the other. Everybody is changed. Uh-huh. Every big guy, mm-hmm. if you see any business, is not what they started. Right, right. Paytm did not start with whatever they have today. Correct. Or any big business you see is not started off with where it was. Correct. It's changed, changed, changed. One particular model works. Once that works, you just stick on it and scale up. I think it's persistent, you will figure it out and then from there. You figure way. it out in the process though. Right. Like unless you try, you never figure it out. Right. Theoretical is very different from practical. Mm-hmm. That's why even when we studied, when right. we had chemistry theory, we had chemistry practicals. Right, right. So right. practical is extremely important when it comes to theory as well. Theory will end of the day it's on paper. Makes sense. So I, I would say I apply a lot of practicality yeah. more than theory. Right. And uh, another last question about events probably right now is um, um, would you or did you ever do free events or hard days? Of course, I've done a lot of free events okay. for a lot of events. Okay. For them to just come as a proof of concept to say that this is what I'm capable of, right. but I'm not money minded, uh-huh. that's why I want to do this free of cost for you okay. because I want to build a relationship with you. Got it. And I tell them saying, when I ask you for sponsorship, I'm not making group money out of you, yeah. but there will be X amount of mileage what I give you. Yeah. Further, I'll take, take this event free of cost and come and do whatever integration you want. Uh-huh. That's a straight up five lakhs discount what I've given you in the association. So come do it, try it out, uh-huh. and then I know next event you'll come back. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's that's a very key takeaway, yeah. I think. A lot of this thing I've done for me. Okay, okay. Okay. So moving on from events, I think one of the most interesting takeaways from your talk today was about networking. Yeah. And I think you mentioned that is the key to your Correct. success till now. So uh, I would say that is the key to anything. Okay. okay. So networking, mm-hmm. your right connect mm-hmm. is what makes a good business to a big business. Right, right. A good business can never become a big business mm-hmm. unless you have the right connects. Right, right. You'll always be a good product. Right. Now Paytm, like Paytm, there are a lot of other companies like phone pay and a lot of other things. Uh-huh. Paytm is very big because they're very well networked with the government, okay. with whatever they are. So same applies to everybody else. Any large format, big company, what you've seen, they always have competition who might be equally good. Mm-hmm. But it is what is the difference between Ola and a taxi for sure, or Ola and a Uber? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Taxi, Ola and taxi for sure equally doing very well. Mm-hmm. But then the guys who funded Ola was was SoftBank, mm-hmm. and they did very well. Tiger Global, mm-hmm. so funded Ola. Mm-hmm. When a Tiger Global funded them, they could buy out a taxi for sure. But if Tiger Global funded taxi for sure, they would have bought out Ola. Yeah, right, sir. That is my opinion. No, that's that's my view. Correct, correct. Like if the first set of big investors if they funded taxi for sure over and over. Taxi for sure over and over is what I think uh-huh. personally. So for example, like um, you said like the best way to networking is go out. Go to as many events as you can. I, I go for a lot of these events. Okay. I've gone for a lot of these events, I've met a lot of people in these events. Right. And I think somewhere down, it might not help you tomorrow, but yeah. somewhere down the line, you know that you met this person and mm-hmm. this is what he does, and you can always reconnect with them. Right. Then I met you here. Right. So they know that a person like you, they've seen you and you exist, mm-hmm. and you can go meet them. So, um, most of these, I mean, a lot of my friends don't believe in this concept of you know going out. Like they're happy with that, but they know the importance, but they're still not willing to go that one step ahead and go and talk to people. So, how do you think they that is the, yeah. that is the That is what I would say is. Is a personal thing on how you, is your aggression? Okay. Like I mean, you are aggressive enough to yeah to go and meet people and do things yeah. like hustle and do things, yeah. or you are always saying I'll be laid back and big things will come to you, okay. and the latter doesn't work. Got it, got it. Mm-hmm. So it's really important to go there and aggressively do things. Okay. Yeah, that's so and another probably last question around networking is uh, there are a lot of events is there I think in the market there are a lot of startup events going on probably there are a lot of parties uh, how do you choose what events to do? I uh, you can't choose okay. you just need to go okay. whenever you have the time please go for it. Yes, sure. okay. something better than sitting at home. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean you never know which is good which is not good right. and I don't believe in these big conferences and all mm-hmm. because in the big business there are so many people you don't get you don't get a time you don't get the time to speak to anybody. Everybody is busy in their own things. Right. So I would never oh, choose like a, okay, if I have like say three events I can uh-huh. go for. Uh-huh. I wouldn't choose like a big tycoon or a big, one of these big startup means over a smaller, I would never do that. Okay. Because the big ones, mm-hmm. you, nobody has the time to talk to anybody. Right. Because there are already big people here. Right. I would always choose a smaller one, uh-huh. hyper local, 
Because yeah. people who come here are eager to meet anybody else because they are the same entire community everybody else. Yeah. So any uh, like best practices, what do you think takes it off you? Like a lot of people do network but they aren't able to drive patients. I would say pay, when you meet people, like even if nothing works out, be patient because somewhere down the line it might work out. That's the key. Patience. So I think one last question, what are your best moments of the last year been? What are your future plans? I mean our last year's best moment was opening up our own hospitality, like our expansion in Jaipur. Mm-hmm. Because last year was the year we decided say when we opened up the first hangover, it, we, gave, we gave it time for it to scale up and build a brand. Yeah. And last year the decision we took to scale up. Right. And opening up the two new outlets is what my turning key was for the last year. Mm-hmm. And this year we are planning to make that the biggest brand in Bangalore. Awesome. Not outside and the next year would be the plan to go outside Bangalore okay. in the hospitality segment. Any tips for folks in the hospitality like I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of capital investment. Any tips for guys entering the hospitality segment? How hospitality I segment, I would say you will be very hospitable. Yeah, it will be nice that's, to be that's, yeah, that's a deep that's a, very, that's a very, no that's a very big task. Okay, okay, okay. It's a big task to be nice to everybody. Uh-huh. Because you always have people who you can't please and then they write against you. Right. So those guys, those people who are not being, you need to again be nice to them and offer them something and retarget them uh-huh. to give them a good experience. Okay. So customers are your king, yeah. keep them happy because they are the ones who come and spend money in your place and not yourself. Mm-hmm. So that is my take on hospitality. What is your plan for 1920? Anything? 19 I told you, to yeah. make the biggest brand in Bangalore City yeah. and 20 is our, to take it across the country. That's awesome. I think, yeah, I mean, it was a pleasure talking to you, Sabda. Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks for inviting me. I'll see you soon. Yeah, sure. Bye. Thanks so much.